بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد Dear respected viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled Towards the Origin Broadcasted live from the studio of Channel S Watched on Sky 814 For those who will be joining with us now or later Through our YouTube channel, Facebook page or even live streaming via our Channel S website For many, it's now time for summer break And we'll be planning or even most of us have planned and even in a process of leaving the country to places where bright sun shines or even visiting cities, historical, academic purposes, educational purposes. Some might be visiting the beautiful city of Istanbul, looking at the magnificent mosque or maybe even the glamorous city of Dubai. And therefore, we have chosen to discuss our tonight's topic on holiday, a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it really a blessing holiday? Because many might say how holiday is blessing. Some might even anticipate with great apprehension all of this and many more. Inshallah, we'll be trying and exploring how holiday can be used in a constructive manner that our, we can engage our youth in a very constructive and productive manner. Many more, inshallah, we'll try and discuss in our tonight's episode. To discuss this topic, we have with us a graduate from al Azhar University who is the respected Imam and Khatib of the London Central Mosque and Islamic Cultural Center, famously known as Regent's Park Mosque, Sheikh Qadi Lutfa Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for joining with us. Barakallahu feekum. You're welcome. Now, just to start with, our topic is holiday, a blessing of Allah. Is it really a blessing? Yes, inshallah. If I can, if you can throw some light, because many would think, or even, for example, not everyone would be in the capacity of going abroad every single year. Now, we know the cost of living is rising, the cost of childminding is rising, and many parents, parents might be dreading about how can they engage their children in activities that will benefit them, because we know empty or free time mm -hmm. is the Satan's great power. Yeah, that's right. So how do you say, or how do we understand holiday is in fact a blessing of Allah? Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan ala ni'matil islam. Fahadhi ni'matul azimah alati anqadhan Allahu biha min al-zulumati ila al-nur. Wa manna alayna biha bi khayri khalqihi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahum salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ثم أما بعد After praising Allah and sending salam and salutations to our holy prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah He is one and he has no partners and I also testify that the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger and slave of Allah the Almighty Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala gave children a, a special status. Islam gave children and young youth, uh, uh, young brothers and sisters or youth in general, a huge importance and a special status. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Al-Malu wal-Banuna zinatul hayati dunya Wealth and children are the beauty of this world. They're the adornment of this world. Not only they're the beauty, do you not think they are an amana, a trust given to the parents? As well, yes. But generally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-malu wal-banuna zinatul hayati dunya Also we see, uh, when we look at the prophetic statements, we find uh, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Laysa minna man lam yarham saghirana. He is not one of me who doesn't be kind and merciful to the younger one, to youth, to children. And then with regards to youth, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ Seven groups of people will be given shelter on the day of resurrection, on the day of Qiyamah. يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّ On a day when there will be no shade apart from the shade of Allah. And he said one of them, well, one of these groups is وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ A youth or a young man or woman who spent his or her youth time in the worship of Allah, in the obedience of Allah. So when you say the young people, now this gives us an utmost importance that being, while you're young, mm. the acceptance of ibadahs mm. are more 
in quantity or more glorified than doing it at a later stage because of yes that's right because um because when someone's young child teenager or maybe youth um, this is a very this is a very difficult time it's a tri time of struggle so when someone can manage to control his or her desire at this during that period that allah really loves it i mean how would you define struggle in what context struggle, uh, fighting with the desire that we spoke last last okay, the uh, calamities last week. or the trials that are trials there tribulation temptations of okay. the world amusement of the world they have been designed to actually distract people from the ibadah or the worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now if you um, uh, permit me, Brother Kama, today, we'd like to speak to our children today, indeed, tonight. Indeed. We speak a lot with our adults, and we speak a lot with our elder elders. But tonight, I want to speak to my children, young children, if you are indeed, okay with please that. Please dedicate. So, so I want to mention a story today, um, and that story is the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim, Prophet Abbas, Ibrahim, Abbas, Abbas. who was a great prophet of Allah. He is considered to be our father, Millat Abikum Ibrahim, Khalilullah, friend of Allah, a special friend of Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. Ibrahim was so important that he is actually a prophet of Islam and also Christians and Jews as well. So he is uh, the f uh, the the prophet of all mainstream Abrahamic faith or religion. And as, religions. Muslim, as Muslim, do we not know him as the father of the nation? Exactly. Mm. Ibrahim. Now, we'll be talking a lot about Ibrahim because also Eid al-Abha is coming and it's, it's supposed to be most likely on the 1st of September uh, on Friday. Um, so we'll be talking a lot about Ibrahim. But today, we want to touch upon his youth. When he was a teenager, only 13 years old, he, he was tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't Sometimes some of the children we think, oh, we are young, we are too small, we can't do much, we can't play a role in society. Or we haven't got the freedom. Or we don't have the freedom, or we're not that significant. So we don't value and appreciate ourselves, my young children. But when we look at the history, then we find there are some people who are really young, very uh, early age, but they contributed hugely in this world, such as Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Now, the story of Ibrahim is famous, so beloved to Allah, that Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, he loved it. So that's the reason why he, why he wanted to inform the Holy Prophet Muhammad and his followers as well. So what happened? Ibrahim was a young man. He is born to a family which used to worship the idols. Society is full of idols. His father himself, not only he's just an idol worshiper, but he's an idol businessman. So he would, the source of his income for his father would be selling idols. Basically, he used to construct yeah, the idols. idols and yeah. then go out in the market and sell them and make money out of this. So you can imagine Ibrahim والسلام, was, was born and brought up in that environment full of uh, shirk, full of worshipping idols and statues and rocks and bricks. So are we talking about before he revealed, uh, before he was the revelation? We're talking about before he became a prophet. Okay. So that's, that's the stage. He was only um, around 13 years old. Now Ibrahim was bothered a lot about this um, khurafat, about this uh, beliefs and faith that people superstitions. had, superstitions that people had. So he didn't really, uh, he wasn't satisfied and content with what was going on in his society. So what he did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ That we blessed Ibrahim with rushd, understanding, intellect, guidance. So he was someone who was rashid. Who, he, he had a, a special understanding uh, from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Why? Because he spoke, he dialogued with his father, his, his dad. He said, إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ he spoke to his father and his, and his قوم, his, his people, his nation, communities, and leaders of the communities. What are you doing? Why do you worship certain things? You know, التماثيل, like these are statues, they, they can't even speak, they can't even protect or defend themselves, they can't, they can't um, uh, uh, harm or benefit anyone. Then, the, the father or, or the people of the community, they said, So they said, because we found our parents and our fathers and our early generations, they were doing it. So we're just following this merely, that's all. We just found it like this and we're doing it. Then Ibrahim, he had the guts and he, had, he was so brave to say that, You and your early generations are in clear, a plain misguidance. Then Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, 
Anyway, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he understood and he realized the fact that there was clear misguidance and wrong going on in the society. So one day, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, what he did is he decided to enter into the temple uh, of, of the mushrikeen, the polytheists. Uh, and then he decided to destroy or, or, or he took an axe on his hand and he wanted to break all the statues, all the idols in the temple. But he just left the biggest idol and he, he broke all the, uh, the small ones, the minor ones. And then he just went, simply he just went out, he left. Now when people returned, they, people were out, when they returned to their temple and they saw that this crime, this Imagine like, you know, their gods are killed and they're, they're demolished. The people who worship yeah, those yeah, gods. Yes, okay. that's how they consider uh, these are their gods. So um, they couldn't take it. They were really, really furious and angry. And they wanted to uh, punish the person who committed that crime, according to them. So they said, who has, who done this crime? Who done this, 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 um, this heinous crime? We want to see him. Hmm. Um, uh, he is someone who is an oppressor. Then um, they said, well, uh, you know, there was a boy uh, who <coughs> used to talk to us and he used to uh, make a fuss about these things. Probably he's the one who done it. And his name is Ibrahim. Ibrahim. We know or we remember uh, or there's a boy called Ibrahim. Possibly he done that. قَالُوا فَأْتُوا بِهِ عَلَىٰ أَعْيُنِ النَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْهَدُونَ So they said, bring Ibrahim and we want to speak to him and we want to see whether he done it or not. So they said, bring him in front of us so we can see him and we can punish him if necessary. And then they asked, قَالُوا أَنْتَ فَعَلْتَ, uh, قالوا أنت فعلت هَذَا بِآلِهَتِنَا يَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ Have you done this? crime have you done have you broke or have you broken all these all these idols or ibrahim then ibrahim he was so clever he wanted to uh, make a rational argument so he said no uh, i haven't done it it's the biggest idol he is the one who took an axe and he broke and he destroyed the other gods other idols i haven't done it so then they said how can you say that? Are you making sense, or Ibrahim? What are you talking about? These are I, how can they do this? They can't. They have no. Uh, they have no ability to do these things. They can't do it. Then Ibrahim said, "This is my point. Why do you uh, worship something that cannot even defend themselves? Why are you worshiping them?" Um, so Ibrahim alayhissalam argued with them with rational, um, and so. Uh, he said that you know this is the biggest one who yes. done it. So if he speaks, go and speak to him and ask him. So they said um, they were not happy. Uh, they were still angry. Um, so they said we have to punish this boy. We have to stop him unless we get rid of him from the society. He will keep on troubling and he will he will make this uh, this these problems and cause this tension for us. Okay, now, before I move any further, mm -hmm. there are two elements that we have noticed from the discussion you mm -hmm. have made. Firstly, when you have mentioned that he used to discuss, engage in dialogue mm -hmm. with his father. Yep. Now, let's bring it in our today's mm -hmm. world. How many of us do we engage in discussion mm -hmm. with our parents, especially sons with their fathers? Or it's even uh, sisters with their discussions mothers. Are, are definitely needed, uh, but again, we have to also observe and maintain the manners, manners, etiquette. etiquettes. Yeah. Now, what it is is, for mm. example, is it not uh, something that we need to ponder upon? That we need to make our childrens give them that space that they feel comfortable yeah, in discussing with their this parents. Is important, yes. Because what we see, if the fair parents yeah. are not friendly with yes. them, then they try to look for places where they can go outside. And they can go astray. And, and yeah, that's right. That's, that's an important point. So I think parents, uh, to certain extents, they have to make <coughs> the comfortable environment where children can discuss and speak, and uh, at least like they make like, the discussion that can be beneficial. And this is really important. Now, uh, going back to the story of Ibrahim, I think the, we don't want the children to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no so, uh, before they sleep. So, my beloved children, now, Ibrahim was uh, facing the death penalty now. So, the people, the leaders of the communities, uh, they said, we have to punish Ibrahim, bring him... I mean, that was the punishment that was prevalent with yeah. at that time in that society. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, yeah. that society. So, they said, bring Ibrahim, and they were not happy. They said, the only way we can stop that boy from his 
preaching or from his influence is by getting rid of him. So we have to kill him. So they said, go and um, they, they kind of sat down amongst themselves and they consulted and they said, let's make a fire. And then we will throw Chuck Ibrahim into the fire so he's fully burned and he can be punished while he's dying. So they decided to, um, they decided to chuck Ibrahim Alayhi and they did. But they forgot the fact that Allah is the controller of everything. Allah creates everything. Fire doesn't have any power. Air doesn't have any power. Water doesn't have any power. The actual power is connected with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah wants, he can stop everything. So Ibrahim Asam was literally chucked into the fire and um, he said very strongly with, with faithfulness, he said, قَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Even though, remember, he's a child, and he said, <coughs> my Allah is enough for me. He's the best of guardians. He's the best of helpers and best of mentors. So he said, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ So this dua is very important. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ At the time of difficulties, Ibrahim was saved, and Allah the Almighty instantly ordered the fire, said, قُلْنَا يَا نَارَكُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ Oh fire, become cool, be cool and peace for Ibrahim. Now, there is another lesson in that. Mm. Even at a young age, when we think that we have been given the best of age, mm. the best of ability, can conquer the world, mm. can change the world, mm. do whatever I desire. Yeah. But yet, at a time of calamity, we learn the utmost trust. It's we trust have to lie in, in, in the Creator. Exactly. Yeah. And so that means it only comes with the understanding and knowledge. And I think the practice by implementation, implementing the deen. That's right. Yes, yes, that's right. And also uh, correct tarbiyah. Um, so the nurture that nurture they get around. Well, yes. okay. So Ibrahim salam, uh, he was a young boy. He had, to, he had his trust in Allah the Almighty and he was protected by his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again we said <coughs> Ibrahim would be discussed because he's a prophet who went through a lot of tests in this world. He, he was Khalilullah. And you need to know that the people who are, whom Allah loved the most, he gave them the most, most tests in this world and tribulations. And therefore Ibrahim was Khalil means a, a special friend uh, a, a, as opposed to Sadiq. So Sadiq is just a friend, but Khalil is even more a closer friend. So friends have degrees and, and categories as well. Now, mentioning, having uh, said or mentioned this story, we can learn certain things. Number one, those who, the children who think, oh, we are still young, we can't do much, they need to understand Ibrahim was 13, but he was looking for the meaning of the life. He was looking into the ex purpose of his existence in this world. So he was an ordinary child, but at the same time, he was thinking much more deeper, much more profound, not just playing, going out, uh, uh, playing games, and uh, playing footballs, playing sports outside, or watching cartoons and TVs, not only that, yes, fun, to a certain extent is okay. But Ibrahim was looking into things in much more detail. He wanted to know why we here in this world. So basically prioritizing the priorities in life. In life, yes. So Ibrahim he was trying to find out the purpose of his existence. Also, he proved to the people of the world the oneness of Allah. And he <coughs> proved to the people of the world the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was Ibrahim. One other thing we need to understand, Ibrahim, was a child, yet he didn't follow the local local trend, fashion, or the style. Or, or, or in other words, the, the majority what they follow. Major, exactly, okay. the majority. So Ibrahim Ali Sassam, even though he was he was a young boy, but he didn't go for the fashion that you know many of us today nowadays, many of our young. Or the children, current trend oh, that's there. This this my friend he's got this trainer, my friend he's got this uh, this clothes, he's got this um, tracksuit, he's got this um, um, t shirt. So we have to go for that, we have to go for that branded clothes. So we have we are, we are following constantly the fashion and and the and the style and 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 and, and trends. But Ibrahim Hassan was a child, but yet he was much more intellectual, intelligent, and much more serious than 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 a normal ordinary child. But that's that's how a Muslim child is supposed to be. That's how a a young child is supposed to be. And most of our giants in the history of Islam, they began from the early age and from the early stage. No, not only in the history, even in our today's time, we see those people who became the leader or became the scientist or became successful, that they've left a legacy behind. Then we have seen, if we look at the history, that yes. they have, since their childhood, had a determination, yes. had a focus, yes. and had that vision to change or bring about a change. Absolutely right, yes. 
Um, also, we, we understand the difficulties of our young children in these days and age, <coughs> especially the, uh, the, the temptations that we have in this outside, um, the cars, the, the musics, the, the world amusement, world, worldly beauty, and also the, the um, entertainments that children are so used to with entertainment that if there's nothing, if, if something doesn't have any entertainment, they're not there. So even schools, if they don't have entertainments, they will just hate. So they're so used to with the entertainments that completely uh, they, they're drowned into it and they, they just want that happiness and the entertain amusement. Um, and also this peer pressure, like you know, friends, oh, the friends, what they're doing, that we have to follow the friends. But we need to understand, um, uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, the boxer, the world uh, famous boxer, he said, be different and think differently. He said in one, of, in one of his statements. And Prophet Muhammad said, be opposite to the majority. That you don't have to be with the majority, especially when it comes to the following, comes to following the truth. So he said, um, uh, for example, in a, in a statement. So be opposite and be different. Now, we don't have to be like everybody in this society. We can be different. And the different ones are the ones who are successful, who achieved something in this world. Brilliant note we can end on. And inshallah, we'll continue that after the it's break. Fine. That quick. <laughs> my dear viewers, indeed. My dear viewers, it's time for a short break. We have been discussing about our tonight's topic, which is holiday, a blessing from Allah. And we've listened to the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and our respected guest, he was engaging and discussing how the youth can shape their today's world to make their future better. We'll continue to listen more, but after the short break. Wassalamu alaikum. <laughs>